Hello, this is Phil Griffin with Professor Chef. Today we're going to show you some kitchen gadgets that can help make your life a little bit easier. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is um, a garlic peeler. I hate, I repeat, I hate peeling garlic. So what we have is one of these silicone tubes. If you roll it, the garlic comes out already peeled. That one's a little bit smashed. Try it again. Nice and pe peeled. Nice and peeled. Where do you and get this? This is a pampered chef item. And what you can do now is once it's been peeled, you can slice it instead of mincing it or scraping it. And you can use that when you saute. It's better to use a whole slice of garlic versus um, little pieces. Let me show you. So, if we use this in the saute, you can brown it a little bit better and it doesn't burn as fast. So, garlic peeler, whole cloves, use them sliced. All right, trick number one. <clears throat> trick number two. Average <clears throat> everyday potato peeler. Potato peelers are double sided. You can go back and forth and peel your carrot a little bit faster. And it saves you your time. They have to be in this fashion. The old fashioned ones work also. Just go back and forth. You can save your time peeling carrots. Let's talk about zesting. When we use a lemon, a lot of times we use the zest of the lemon or the lime because it has a lot of flavor. There's a couple different ways you can go about getting that. Um, channel life is one way of using it. So your channel life you take and you score it, pull out all the zest. And if you do it like this, you channel life all the way around, I can make slices and I have a nice fancy garnish. So I have a garnish, and I have zest, and I use one lemon to do both. That's a lime. A lime, mm -hmm. sorry. You know what I'm talking about. All right. Another way you can zest is using a microplaner. Whenever you zest, make sure you turn around and turn it so you're not getting the white pit. Um, Paper Chef also has another version of their own channel life, so you can use it this way. Like we showed earlier, or you can grab little smaller ones like this. Now, if you don't have a, a microplane or a zester, the old fashioned way is you just take a potato peeler, slice off a piece, and then with your knife skills, just barely run your knife through it, and you get a nice little zest. So in the same way, you get that the three, four, three or four different versions. <clears throat> Another thing that you will use a lot of time in the kitchen is a uh, thermometer. So I have three different ways of taking temperatures now. So the one tool I love using is an infrared thermometer. It's a point and shoot. It's the little lid dying. It shows you the surface temperature of whatever you're working with. Okay. It is good for surface temperatures only, but in cooking we can use it to temp out our soups, temp out our hot oil, temp anything that you need to get that surface temperature for. I use it when I fry. Harbor Freight, 20 bucks. Then you have your probe thermometer, which you stick in, and you get the temperature of whatever you're working with. Okay. The way you use it is you stick it in, go all the way to the bottom, and then back it off about a quarter of an inch and take your reading. You want to make sure you're getting to the middle of that. And that will give you the internal temperature of whatever you're cooking. Now before the days of thermometers, what they used to do is they used to take a metal skewer of some sort, take and you put it in, same thing, pull it back, come to 10, And then you test it on something sensitive. The two areas that are very sensitive to test temperature is the, your wrist or the tip just underneath your lip. And if you feel a nice and heat, you can actually 
tell if it's been cooked or not all the way through. And that's how you can temp out your foods. And those are just some quick and easy tips to help you make your life easier in the kitchen.